Now to campaign 2018, three weeks after he was accused of using a dog whistle racist phrase in reference to his Democratic opponent, Ron DeSantis's gubernatorial campaign is once again being overshadowed by a racial controversy. Tonight he is disavowing a comment by one of his campaign's major donors and activists. And now in a deleted tweet, a now deleted tweet, Stephen Allenbeck called former President Barack Obama the N-word and said he was a Muslim. Now Allenbeck defended the tweet and said it was not racist. CBS Force Jim DeFitti sat down with DeSantis today. He joins us now. How could that not be racist, Jim? Oh, I, Ron DeSantis even says that it's racist. There's no question that it was a racist tweet. You know, these questions about Ron DeSantis, uh, you know, the people who he have associated with in terms of whether conferences he's attended or folks who have been signed up to host fundraisers for him have been dogging his campaign for weeks. But at the same time, a very interesting thing has been taking place where Ron DeSantis has been accusing Gillum of saying, you know, you, you can judge Gillum by the people he associates with. So part of my conversation, this is the longest remarks he's ever made on this, I asked DeSantis whether or not that was truly fair, since obviously he's got problems with who he associates with. Here's what he said. What they're trying to do to me is saying, oh, well, this guy once knew Ron DeSantis, and then two years later he tweets something offensive on Twitter. That's just warmed over McCarthyism. Anyone that endorsed me um, or whose endorsement I sought, I think that's absolutely fair game, you know, and, and I can argue from, from either side, but, I mean, there's just apples and oranges here. Well, I mean, you're having a fundraiser today um, with uh, Jeb Bush is, is hosting it. One of the one of the co-hosts was Ralph Arza. He was never a co-host. See, this is this is why we get so much... It was on the... Wasn't he, it on the flyer? It was not... So, th there was not... The, the, the invitation had not been approved by my campaign. People were submitting names from around South Florida about who could potentially do it. They were in the process of circulating it. I don't even know who Ralph Arza is. I didn't pass vetting, um, but, you know, someone in the press got ahead of it and said this was the invitation. It wasn't. It had not been approved yet. But you see what I'm saying. In other words, you, you have that, you have well, Alan Well, we now. have the, we, we were going, that's why we vetted it, and that's why it would not have ended up being uh, finalized that way. Um, but there's a whole host of difference between saying somebody who may give money and then says something offensive versus adopting somebody's platform and endorsing certain policies. I mean, that's what Andrew Gillum is doing. So it's totally apples and oranges. We can go search all of Andrew Gillum's supporters' social media accounts, and you know what? We will find vile and obscene stuff because that's what it is. The stuff that I get about me, my wife, my kids from the left is revolting. That's why I don't do social media. So if we want to play that game, we can do it. But that doesn't really tell us anything. Anyone that's endorsing me or who's in, whose policies I'm endorsing, totally fair game. So it's much different. Let me, let, me, let me phrase it this way, and I, and I don't want to belabor it, but I just want to, because it seems to me it's an interesting moment that, that we've got here, which is that you come from a background in a congressional district where, you know, you, you lived in a world of, that was conservative, and there wasn't going to be a lot of blowback to some of the things, whether you attended a particular conference, even if the other speakers may have said something that were offensive. It, it, it was a there conference. Was nothing, there was nothing wrong. It was a conference that's been going on for 20 years at the Breakers. It's had presidential candidates, senators, congressmen. The conference that they were trying to say, it was not racial at all, but the, con the conference they tried to say that was keynoted by a Medal of Honor recipient, Clint Romache. My so it's a, it's a false characterization, no, no, but and my it's not true. Here's, my, here's what the point I was trying to make is, is that, is that when those things occurred, there was no blowback to you at the time. Nobody raised it. It's only now. So it, it's a matter of going from the the no. confines. Well, the confines. I had been of running for the Senate at the time in one of the, uh, you know 2016. Uh, I had gotten into the governor's race in 20 beginning of 2018. My speech at the thing is on the the dang internet. People can watch it. There's no one. No one has been able to identify anything I actually did. It's like oh six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Let's try to find somebody who may have attended this. And the thing is, too, is the reason why a guy like me goes and speaks at these political conferences, and I've done almost every one in the conservative sphere, is because you go, you speak, you meet with donors, and you build political support. And the folks who are there in the crowd, you know, these are good philanthropic people. They're, they're, they're diverse in terms of their religion and different things. And so it's just a lie to characterize it the way the left is doing it. And you guys in the press, why don't you go interview some of the people who were there? Why don't you interview Clint Romache, who spoke there, and ask him? Him if he was doing that because there was any type of race. There was no race. There have been big time African American conservatives that have spoken at this thing. The, the question I was trying to get to was is this part of the challenge of going from 
competing in a world that is largely conservative, Fox News driven, to now trying to become a general election candidate running in a statewide race. It's not, it's not that as much as it's, you know, it's a more important race than my congressional race was. Um, and you're just, you know, we have a, a, a politics that is very demagogic, and that's basically what, what they're trying to do. Now think about it. Like, I don't have to, I mean, Gillum, I can go through his associations. I don't have to do that because I can identify the problems with his record, his vision, and his lack of leadership. For me, all they're trying to do is, is slime me with what other people do. Why don't you focus on my policies? Why don't you focus on my leadership? Why don't you focus on the fact that when Andrew Gillum was on the Tallahassee Commission voting himself additional benefits, I raised my hand to go serve this country in Iraq. Why don't we have that debate? So you can tell he's a little bit exasperated wow, yeah. by you uh, pushing for answers there. Yeah, you know, this is the, this is a problem that his campaign has. It got off to a rocky start with comments that he directly made, referring to what you know we can't right. monkey around with this or monkey this up. And then he, then now that sort of fed into one thing begets another begets another. And now he's got a series of things that are driving this narrative that is, from his perspective, unfair and frustrating. But at the same time, this is what happens when you're on this sort of a stage. He's right. Congress was one level. Running for governor of the fourth largest or third largest state of the nation, that's a whole other level, and that's what he's learning about. Yeah, no, these questions are going to keep come, continuing during sure. this campaign. Jim, thank you very much. And you can watch more of Jim's interview with Ron DeSantis this week on Facing South Florida. That's Sunday at 8.30 a.m. right here on CBS4.